So the first thing I'm going to make is beef bourguignon, which is really just beef stew with red wine. And I'm going to serve it with a salad with a creamy mustard vinaigrette and maybe a Cure Royale, which is champagne with a little bit of Cure in it. Mmm, sounds good. For the beef bourguignon, what I have here is about a half a pound of bacon. I cooked it in a tablespoon of oil. I'm going to take it out, which leaves some of the fat in the pan. And then I'm going to cook the beef and the vegetables and the wine, a little cognac. It's going to be really good together. You know, I think Americans think of French food is this sort of fancy pinkies up kind of thing. And I love the really traditional recipes that are real country food. So the next thing I'm going to do is take two and a half pounds of chuck, which is a fairly inexpensive cut of meat, not like filet of beef. And I've cut it in cubes. And I'm just going to dry it a little bit. If the cubes are dry, they'll brown better in the pan. Just salt, pepper, And then I'm going to brown them in the pan. Just do it in a single layer so they brown really evenly. Oh, this looks great. So the meat's all nice and brown, and it really brings out the flavor. So I'm going to take this and take it out of the pan onto the plate with the bacon and just put it all together. You want to save all the juices, and it's all going to go back in the pan later. OK, and then the next thing I'm going to do is put in the rest of the meat. This is a really traditional French recipe, and I just think it's a much easier way to make it. It takes much less time. But it's wonderful for entertaining, because you've got the meat and the vegetables and everything all together in the pot. And if you make it a day or two in advance, all the flavors just get better and better. You just have to heat it up before dinner. OK, that's done. I'm just going to take this out. Mmm, it smells so good already. Now I'm just going to finish prepping the vegetables. I have a pound of carrots. And now what I'm going to do is throw them into the pot with all the juices from the beef and the bacon. And cook them for about 10 or 15 minutes until they're just tender. And I'm going to add two large yellow onions and a tablespoon of salt and two teaspoons of freshly ground pepper. It seems like a lot, but it's a big stew. I'm just going to saute this for about 15 minutes until the vegetables are just tender and the onions are nicely browned. This is so great. Miguel, I think, is picking up flowers and dessert while I make dinner. So it makes it so much easier and really more fun. I love a good collaborative meal. So the next thing I'm going to do for the beef bourguignon is put in chopped garlic and about two cloves. Very often recipes call for onions and garlic to go in together. But I think the garlic really burns very quickly. So I tend to do the onions for about 10 or 15 minutes and then the garlic for only the last minute. And then you get all the flavor of the garlic and no burning. So two cloves of garlic right in with the carrots and the onions. I'm just going to stir that a, a minute. So I need a half a cup of cognac. I'm going to pour it into the pot. And now comes the fun part. I'm going to flame it. Stand back. Whew. What the flame does is it burns off all the alcohol but leaves that gorgeous flavor of cognac. OK, and then I'm going to put all the meat and the bacon and all those gorgeous juices right back in. Mm. And then a whole bottle of red wine, good red wine. You want to make sure it's wine that you drink. And actually, you can even serve the same wine with dinner. I did say a whole bottle. And then I'm going to add a little bit of beef broth. Just want enough so that it covers, almost covers the meat, but not quite. And don't spend days making beef broth. A can of it is just fine. 
tablespoon of tomato paste. I actually get it in a tube, so it's really easy to keep stored in the refrigerator. Okay, keep it nice and fresh with the top on. And the last thing here is fresh herbs, fresh thyme. Mm. Smelling awfully good. I think Miguel's gonna be pleased. So now it's simmering, which is perfect. Now this is the other novel thing about this recipe. Instead of cooking it on top of the stove, as most beef bourguignon is, and I'm endlessly fiddling, turning up the heat, turning down the heat, I discovered that if I cooked it at 250 degrees in the oven for an hour and 15 minutes, instead of like two and a half hours as they usually are, it comes out perfectly done. So into the oven, an hour and 15 minutes at 250 degrees, and we're gonna have beef bourguignon. Beef bourguignon should be a really thick and delicious stew, and the traditional French one has lots of mushrooms in it. So I'll show you what I do with the mushrooms. You really don't want to wash them, because there's something about them, they just absorb all that water, and they just get sort of watery. So what I'm gonna do is just brush them off with a towel, or paper towel, anything like that, and then I'm gonna slice them up and saute them in a little butter. And if they're really big, I'll take the stems out, but it's not usually necessary. So it's about a pound of mushrooms. It doesn't have to be exact. Okay, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is just slice them really thickly. You don't want little thin slices. You want gorgeous thick slices. Traditionally, beef bourguignon is served with noodles or potatoes, but one day my assistant Barbara and I decided to test that, and we found it was okay. But the best thing is if you take a grilled piece of bread, rub it with garlic, and then pour the beef bourguignon over it. It's sort of like gravy and bread. Who wouldn't like that? It was really good. So that's what I'm gonna do for Miguel. Okay, so, big chunk of butter. High heat. Just let that melt. Big wooden spoon. When you're sauteing something, you always want to let the butter get really hot and then throw it in. It'll really sear the flavor. Okay, nice little sizzle going. And in go the mushrooms. So I'm just going to saute those for about 10 minutes until they're really meaty and delicious and tender. beef bourguignon home stretch. So the mushrooms are done. Oh. Woo. oh, that smells so good. Can't wait to see what Miguel's doing for the table setting. So I only have a few more things to do with the beef bourguignon, and the first is I'm gonna thicken it a little bit. A little butter and flour. Two tablespoons of butter. three tablespoons of flour. This is a really easy way to thicken a sauce. Just mash the flour and the butter together. You wanna have room temperature butter so they go together. It just takes a second, but it's really worth doing right. Okay. Okay, that looks like it's done just until it's all mashed together. I'm just gonna put it in and cook it just a bit. It's just gonna... Mm, I love the way this smells. I can smell the cognac and the wine and carrots and onions. Who wouldn't want that for dinner? I got every last bit. So beef bourguignon has small whole onions and I'm gonna show you a trick. Instead of peeling all those onions, I use frozen small whole onions, and they taste just great. When it comes to big onions, I don't mind peeling and chopping them, but when they're really small, I like the frozen ones. And you just dump them in. Mix it up. And the last thing is the mushrooms that have been sauteed. Okay, right in. Mm. 
And we're gonna let this simmer away for about 15 minutes until all those flavors are together, the beef and the bacon, carrots, onions, little garlic, all that wine and cognac and mushrooms. Oh, this just smells so gorgeous.